Welcome again to the third video about the dung beetle. In this video, we will uh, set up a standalone server uh, and I will show you how to connect to a MySQL server. Uh, it's not mandatory, but the MySQL servers are great for storing bugs and uh, bug, bug reports, I mean. And uh, then we're going to uh, transfer bugs from one dung beetle database to another. Uh, which might happen to you if you started using Dung Beetle with the any in editor server and you decide that you want the standalone server, you can transfer all the bugs over to the standalone server easily. So the standalone server, what is it? It's, um, it's a server uh, and it's made from the same uh, code that uh, the in editor server is. Uh, but it doesn't require Unity to build it. Uh, it, it runs in Mono. So uh, if you have a Mono server, you can run uh, the standalone server. Uh, and actually, after you made the server, you can run it on whichever uh, operating system you want. You can run it on Linux or Mac or Windows, maybe even others. I don't know. Yeah, let's just take a look at one that I have lying around. So this is one. Uh, so I'm going to start by showing you how it's configured. Uh, it has a YAML file next to it, which stores uh, the data that in the inner data server was stored in config.asset. And to edit it, you have to use a text editor and then just uh, yeah, edit the fields there. And the first field uh, has two possible values. One is MySQL, of course. The other one would be like this, SQLite. And if it's SQLite, you don't need a DB username, password, port, URL, or name. All of those are just for MySQL. Uh, the port is the hosting port for the server. Um, and then the passwords for the privileges and the private key. And to get the private key, uh, if you have to set this field, uh, you can go into Unity in the connection window and press copy to clipboard. And then you will have the value there. And then you can just paste it in the, the server preferences file. All right, so um, yeah, let's try and run that one. Yeah, so that's what that looks like. Uh, Windows has .NET support built in. And this is a .NET executable. Uh, if you're not on Windows, you want to use Mono. So that would look a bit different. It would look like this, like mono server.exe. But it would be the same executable. So no worries there. Or even you, maybe you want to debug it and say, then you go mono debug server, server, like that. All right, so that's what it is. And it's config and how to connect to MySQL. Yeah, so there's one thing that you cannot do from within the server, but that you have to do through MySQL itself. Uh, so you have to make sure that there is a user in the MySQL database that has the privileges to work with the database that you want. Um, so this is this is the MySQL workbench. You could uh, otherwise you could use the MySQL command line. And what you need to do is something like uh, you have to log in as the root user and then say grant all to and then your user 
No, it's the other way. So grant all on, and then your database name. Uh, let's try with done with demo. Dot asterisk for all the tables in there. Uh, two, and then the user. And for me, that's like yeah, I have a user called done with at local hosts like that. And when you've done that, uh, you can use those settings in the server preferences YAML file. So then you set the username here, the password, and the database hosting port. It's usually this one for MySQL, but if you changed it, you have to reflect that here. And if it's not on the same machine, you need to write the IP or domain there. And this is the name of uh, the database. And I like to just use Dung Beetle always because it can contain multiple projects. You, you hardly ever need more databases for Dung Beetle ever. All right. So how do I get this server? Yeah. So let's try and create one. So now I need a different project because uh, here I have the DLL version installed. Uh, I need to have one with the source code. Otherwise I can't compile the server. And here I have that. Same project, I just installed the source code version of Dung Beetle instead. And the difference is that these two options are available here. So let's create a, uh, a server. The window with one button. <laughs> and let's place our server in here. Server one. Yeah, success, that went fast. It doesn't have screenshots yet because yeah, it hasn't stored any bugs yet, and, but it has the preferences file already. And this file already contains most of the data. It's just migrated the data from the config file in the editor. So the private key is probably correct, public key probably correct, all of this. And by default, SQLite. So I don't have to worry about these until I want to connect to uh, my MySQL database. All right. And then we might want to migrate bugs. So let's try and do that. So let's say I have in this project, let's see if I have any bugs right now. None. Okay, so let's create one just to demonstrate. So I hope this goes to the editor server. Yeah. Like that. And yeah, here it is. So now we want to migrate this to the other server that we just created. Uh, it's not this one. So where is it? It's here. Let's try that. Here it is. So let's run it. Ah, let's let's worry one second about the port. Because I already have a server running and the ports might conflict. So I'm going to just check the config. So by default it's this one, 75 in the end. And the same for the editor server. Yeah. So I'm going to launch the other server on a different port. 
I'll just edit this. Let's try this. Yeah, so Windows want me to open a port in the firewall. Of course, I want to do that. And now we're ready. Uh, the only difference between the servers is the port. And now I can access both of them from Unity. So let's go to the server migration window. And here I have to connect two servers. So I want to transfer from this one, which is the, the Indian Editor server, and then to this one with the 15279 port. And these labels will tell me whether the servers are ready. It's, the window is actually pinging the servers continuously so that I know whether it's safe to go ahead with migrations. Uh, and these settings, I can clear the target database before I start. That's convenient if you want a, a full replication and you want it to be as equal as possible. But you can also like merge with the existing content on the server. And you can choose whether uh, you want the projects to stay separate or you want to merge projects that have the same names as well. This box uh, is to choose whether uh, this client window will uh, request all the bugs and send it to the target machine, or if the source server should send the bugs over directly. In practice, it's almost no difference. And then we can clear the source database afterwards, and I almost never do that. Yeah, uh, our target database is empty, so I don't care about this either. And then I migrate. Let's see. So here are some messages from the execution. And I can see on the server as well that it has been working. And now I want to try and see those bugs. So let's close the overview window and change our settings so that we use the um, standalone server. So for editor windows, I override this to 9. And see here, oh, I have two projects. Yeah, they both had the default project. Well, let's see which one of them has bugs. Bug reports. I should say bug reports all the time, but yeah. Yeah, so here it is. It's uh, migrated from one server to another, and now it's here. Details and screenshot and everything. Yay. I was a bit nervous about that part. Yeah, and uh, then I just want to mention how you might want to do this in your project. Um, I think having the source code version and be, to be able to create a standalone server is important for big projects uh, because there is always a chance that you will have to make a tiny modification to the system or uh, maybe you just want to and uh, but you don't have to buy the source code version for every member on your team even though the unity asset store License uh, often requires one license per seat and that kind of stuff. But with Dung Beetle, you can compile your own DLL version. So you can change your own uh, source code and then from that derive your own DLL version. You can send that to the other members of your team. Uh, so you basically only need one license for the whole, uh, for the whole project. Uh, so as an administrator, you have the source code version for the repository and for everyone else, you, you share the DLL version. Or maybe you want the source code version for everyone and then you buy a license for everyone. It's not expensive, but yeah, there's a price. All right, see you in the next video.